Okay, here we go. Hey, welcome to another episode of the Black Guy Who Tips podcast. I'm your host, Rod, joined as always by my co-host, Karen. And we are live on a Wednesday, I believe. Uh, I think it is. Ready to do some podcasts and find us wherever you find podcasts. The official weapon of the show is... The taser. And the unofficial, unofficial sport. A bullet by, of the folding chair. <laughs> oh, God. Oh. <laughs> See? Oh. I was thought about that. I was like... I said taser, and I was like, I don't think that's <laughs> right, but it, it's the taser folding chair. Who shit? Just combine them. Mm-mm. It's just the folding chair. <laughs> uh, but yeah, this is uh, you know, the blackout tips. Find us wherever you find podcasts. Official weapon of the show. All that stuff. You know, mm-hmm. uh, how to hit the uh, how to hit the uh, uh, contact info in the show notes so you can like leave feedback. It's right there. You already know. Um. Uh, I don't know what else, you know, just do all that stuff. Uh, we appreciate you. Yep, like, comment, leave, uh, subscribe on subscribe. YouTube. Yep, subscribe. You know, that's a different one. We don't Five always say that. Views. Yeah, if you're listening and you're like, hey, I'm I'm a listener, but I don't always come into the chat room crowdcast.io. They have an app, it pumps out. Uh, Link is right there in the show notes yep. for that, too. Link Everything's in right notes. in the damn show notes, okay? Yes, it is. Um, all right, Karen, are you ready to get into the show? Yes. Do you have like banter or uh, um... a little bit? Not a lot. Okay. All right. That's fine. Do you? Uh, I got a couple things. Sure. Okay. Let's, let's let me uh play some music and then we'll do banter. All right. That's not the one I wanted to play. Uh, here we go. <laughs> The first thing I wanted to kind of banter about, Roger got a new organizer for the for the kitchen, and I actually like it. Oh, you actually like it? Wow! Yes. Thank you. I do. I'm I glad didn't, you actually like it. I didn't know mm-hmm. how I was gonna feel about because you know that I'm so dumb and stupid. It could have been terrible, you know. So good job. <laughs> good no, job I'm by not. me. I'm not saying no. That. It's, it, listen, when you're married to an idiot. <laughs> Sometimes you actually like the things they do. I get it. I did not say that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it's one of those things where uh, I had to understand <laughs> with Roderick uh, cooking and things more. He's going to organize it the way he wants to organize, which is very understandable. And uh, we have like these little small things that got kind of mixed up with the larger things. And when you go in the door, everything's kind of blended up together. I got a divider, but you know, uh, everything in it said, fuck you in your device. <laughs> so everything just everywhere in that little drawer. So I do like it because it's out. It's easier to see, easier to get to. We can put the towels on top. I was like, I really like this. And I, I like it more than I thought I would. Yeah, the organizer is something I got off of Amazon. Uh, since I'm the one that does most of the cooking, I try mm-hmm. to make it as easy as possible. And I noticed that one of the things that was frustrating, and, it, and it's one of those little frustrations you don't really think about, but... Is uh every time I go in the drawer in the kitchen, there's so many things in there. I'm always searching for it. It's hard to find the shit. So I bought like an on the counter couple of drawers that are like a mesh thing where you can kind of see in it. And I just put a lot of the little like utensils I use during cooking. You know, your your uh your your stuff for zesting. Uh, you know, stuff to get pushed around. Uh, your yeah. you know your mixers, your stuff like that. You know, and you know, when I first got it, Karen started trying to move stuff around in there. And I was like, <laughs> I cook. I'll let me move stuff. Move, the last thing woman, I need is get out you. the way. Yeah, like you don't need to be moving stuff that, that, that don't involve you don't, you. Even, you don't even use. So like, what's the point of you organizing it? I, it needs to go where I remember for it to be. Right. Um, so yeah, uh, my car overheated today. Yep. Um, I have no idea what's going on with it. Uh, but um we did manage to get home (laughs) and we managed to get the car to the shop Mm -hmm. and it was looking that was an adventure (laughs) yeah it was looking kind of wild because like i had to drive on the highway uh to take care of somewhere and as i'm like i'm like man the ac doesn't feel like it's pushing out right that feels weird and then 
you know, we have older cars and all that stuff. So I'm like, uh, even though we keep them up, you know, mm -hmm. we pay, you know, we put all the repairs and stuff and all that, but still it's like, you got an older car, I'm on the highway. And then, you know, eventually I'm looking, I start looking at the temperature gauge. I'm like, Whoa, this engine is running hot. And as somebody who's kind of been through that before, it was like, Hey, started raising flags. Yeah. I'm, I was in a, my car, my oldest car or one of my older cars caught on fire. I was coming mm -hmm. home uh, from the gym, going up a hill and I, I this was before I even really knew what the fuck, like I didn't know anything. So I just put, I was pushing the gas pedal down thinking, oh, this will get me up the hill. And all I was really doing was working my engine too hard and caught on fire. Um, and so I made sure not to do anything like that, but yeah, I had to stop the car, let it cool off and all this stuff. It was just kind of like anxiety inducing. Cause then it's like, can we make it to the house? Do I need to call AAA? Is this going to take hours? Is this going to, you know, Karen needs to get back home so she can do work from home stuff. So it was just like a, a little bit anxiety indu inducing, but, um, you know, we got home and then we got the car to the shop up the street. So what was interesting is when we got the car to the shop and this has been happening a lot in the pandemic and this is just one of those areas I hadn't thought about, but I felt like the pandemic sped everything up um the they didn't have a mechanic at the shop now this shop is where we normally go but it seems that they were bought by another company mm -hmm. and so they i'm not even really sure the if they, the yeah outside. everything looks the same on the outside but there's new employees i'm not even sure you know that they're gonna do the same you know work and stuff but i i mean the car is overheating it's not like i have a lot of places i can take it it right. has to be here or like nowhere um and, it's, and he's like we don't have a mechanic i'm like you don't have a mechanic Panic. you know it's like and i feel like the in the pandemic things have just been like that you go to a place mm -hmm. like oh, i would like a burger and fries we don't have fries we don't have a person that can do that you know we and, don't have a cook <laughs> yeah yes. pizza at pizza hut we got sandwiches like <laughs> we ain't got no dough <laughs> i feel like that's everywhere now yes. and so it was a bit of a surprise but we'll see when they call me tomorrow what the damage is i hope it's nothing too major but who knows when you got a car that's old mm -hmm. um what you you're on you buddy no problem and also one thing about us you know, kind of being older and having cars and kind of going through those things. We kind of knew what to do, like right say, and what not to do and things like that. So it made it, it was, it made it a little easier to kind of navigate through. Uh, well, I know stress not about it's not going to help anything. Agreed. So I, it just was no point. Agreed. Um, something else I need to uh, uh, start carrying. And I've been saying this, but I don't ever do it. I need to start carrying a little bit of cash on on person because every now and then i want to do things that require cash but i look and i'm like oh i ain't got no cash mm -hmm. you know on me and on person and so i know roger been kind of getting on me but i don't know i get in my brain when it comes to cash because i feel like hey if you take this card this wallet everything else i can just call and cancel that bitch you take this cash it's gone forever child i get more than 25 dollars on me i mentally i break out into a sweat even though nobody knows it but mentally i'm like nope mm -mm, somebody robbed me that's it this money go forever get in the bank get it off get it off of me it's a mental thing for me i can't explain it i don't know where it come from i just i'm like nope mm -mm, don't like no don't like no loss of my money on person honestly if i'm gonna get robbed i'd rather have cash on me than nothing because i feel like they're criminals. It's not like they're gonna be like, "Oh, okay, well, I didn't mean to inconvenience you. Let me know when you get some cash on you." Like they're still gonna, they're still gonna rob you and be more angry they didn't get cash. If they had cash, they might just take the cash and leave the rest alone. I don't know, but that's true. Um. Anyway, I, I mean, I mostly just think about the conveniences of it. it's always like you. It's always good to have a little bit of money on you because you just don't fucking know. And, right. and everybody ain't got cars and beeping mm -mm. things and all this shit and some stuff you want. You know, it it just it's it's just convenient. But yeah, I try to keep cash on me. Um, trying to think, was there anything else? I feel like there was something else, and I'm forgetting what it is. Oh, yeah, this has been happening a lot lately in this Palestine Israel thing. But it's something that always happens, and I think people just they don't think about us as black people very often. So they don't really understand what it is like to be black in America. Mm -mm. But I would really like 
every marginalized group that's going through a hard time to stop saying, imagine if this happened to black people, how much more people would care and do something about it. Have you not seen our history in America? They don't do shit for us. Right. You know, like George Floyd wasn't the last nigga to be killed by the cops. They still killing them. They still killing us. It's, it, there was no like, you know, all these laws and voting rights restrictions and shit. Getting, this is all targeting us in America. Right. Um, I don't know why people think we have some type of immunity from oppression or like because we, we advocate the most. Um, somehow we've managed to like cross the line to where we're not oppressed or whenever something bad happens, everyone rallies behind us. Have you not seen how many people opposed to us? There's a whole president of the United States that's definitely president because he hated us. Like, I, like, so whenever you see like someone going through a hard time, it's like, you know, John Leguizamo does this where the, you know, um, our girl Raina April, April Rain started a, that hashtag Oscar so white. And it didn't say Oscar's not black. It said Oscar's so white, meaning anybody who's not white could take up that mantle and be like, why yes. is the Oscars not given to my people? But instead he turned it into like, well, look at if it was black people, look, they started a hashtag for black people. It's like, no, they didn't. That's not what happened. And yeah. I'm, you know, the latest is you now have people that are Jewish or um, maybe even Palestinians. It just probably depends on what side of the algorithm you're on. But like they'll have these videos where it's like, imagine if this was black people and it was a college campus. And I'm like, you don't have to imagine. Model Yannanopoulos was giving speeches at colleges and shit. They, uh, you know, um, I forget, they bring in people all the time who are anti-black and just go, that's freedom of speech. And if you're if you're one in a handful of black people that that happen to go to school here too fucking bad freedom of speech means we get to the if, if we let bring in somebody to say it's wrong to oppress black people we should be able to bring in someone to say it's okay right and it's very very frustrating like you said because it's one of those things where when you listen like you say it's one of those things where they go well black people are the loudest so obviously, you know, people listen to them and it's like, that's not true. And it's one of those things to where particularly black being here in America is very frustrating because black people as a total, we have our own issues and problems, but black people as a total, when we fight for marginalized people, we fight for us and everybody else. Like it ain't just a black thing. We're a lot of times we're impacted most of the time more than any other group. That's why we fight the loudest and the hardest and we're consistently everywhere, you know, we need to be. But also some of these other groups, not trying to be funny, y'all need to be present too. Because a lot of times everybody looks at us like we're the only voices and then get mad when they go, well, why ain't we in the room? Well, bitch, nobody, nobody said you couldn't come. Well, I would argue, one, we're not there for everybody else. We're there for us. Yeah, other it's people like benefit from Other it. people might benefit from mm -hmm. it as a side effect. Other people might can join in if they want to, but... We are trying to save our lives in America. And that's the, you know, like if other people benefit from the fact that hate crimes legislation was passed, cool. But it's not like we went there for that purpose. Our lives are always on the line. It's just always kind of a weird thing that happens in these, you know, when people people just pull us out of the out of the uh, bat out of the pokeball and be like, but black people, and it's like, that's not factual that black people have it so fucking easy in America. And all we have to do is say, hey, somebody did me wrong. And then the, the, the wheels of fucking, you know, justice just always rally behind us. It's like, that's not, that's never been true. Yeah. And it's very insulting. And it's one of those things where you look at him, where you look at them when they say this and you go, oh, you don't pay attention. You don't right. pay attention to the laws that they pass specifically uh, target towards black churches. You don't look at the gerrymandering. You don't, you know, you don't look at, at, at things that are past. Oh, you, you just making assumptions about shit. Also, you're keeping tally, right? Like you're right. going, like, that's the thing about that Juliana Margulies interview. It felt like she was saying to herself, but you have had movements in the past. And even though I didn't really like them or didn't really care or should I didn't say anything against them. I put up a black square and now it's my turn and no one's paying me back. And 
It's like, uh, that is not what I'm asking for. That's not what a lot of black people are asking for. So it was just something, like I said, I saw a random video, but I've been seeing so many of these videos. And now that they had this college campus freedom of speech thing that I was listening to on the daily, um, and it was one of those things where I wasn't really sure what happened at first, but you know, it, it becomes obvious what happened now. Mm-hmm. But it, it was one of those things where it was like, um, I saw someone being like, but if this is black people and they said some uh, anti-black genocidal shit about black people on our college campus, how many people would, and I'm like, they have, have. and nobody they do that and, nothing, and nobody does and shit. Nothing happens. We be, we be mad. Maybe we organize some type of mm. march around, but it's not like the college campuses are like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You can't do that. Like right. plenty of people have done. We, use, I mean, fucking with black people, a lot of that stuff happened on college campuses to people. Mm-hmm. So anyway, that was it's not funny, but that was my bad. My the last one I have is uh because of the transition of us into from a pandemic to an endemic mm-hmm. that we're in now. I'm glad that restaurants are bringing menus back because uh, uh not trying to be funny, when I go to a restaurant, I don't want to have to look through my 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 uh two inch fucking telephone. I actually want to actually hold a menu and read a menu and flip through the pages. Maybe because I'm old, I'm like I don't want to to open up and have to do my screens. And a lot of those things are are they're, they're all over the place and not organized. You don't know what to click and shit like that. Nope. Just I'm glad people are bringing back the fucking menus. Thank God. I agree. Um. All right. Let's get into some other some other news. Um. Play some more music. All right, news, news, news. It is still happening, everybody. Uh, where should we start? Um, how about this? Uh, the House votes to formalize Republican impeachment inquiry into Joe Biden. Trying to see if he was connected or profited from his son Hunter, Hunter Biden's business deals. The 221 to 212 party line vote opens the door for the GOP to get more evidence about schemes that have been that have seen the Biden family get millions from the country, including China, Ukraine and Romania. Now, this is a right wing magazine that published this. But the point being, they they this has been the game plan. Yeah. And it's it's very uh, frustrating because trust, don't you think? as many people that scrutinize the president, if there was something going on nefarious, it it would have came out way before this, and you're fucking wasting taxpayers' money, and I'm to the conclusion that the GOP, they don't want to run shit. They don't want to run shit. They don't want to do shit. They don't want to run shit. They just want to be obstructionists and, and, and shit like that, and then, not tell me funny, when the country just goes to shit, they, you know, they're, they're going to claim it is the Democrats uh, did it, even though they're out here fucking it up, and then the Democrat, not time. <sighs> a lot of the Democrats. Take your time, baby. Take your time. Yes, and and and, and this is how I really feel. A lot of the Democrats are very stupid because they fall for that shit, shit hook, line, and sinker. And the Republicans will go, "It's Democrat fault." They go, "Yeah, it's Democrat fault." Like, bitch, what's wrong with you? Ain't you been paying attention? It's not our fault. It's their fault. They're fucking it up. Hold them bitches accountable. But every time you have have a subsection of a subsection. That actually just everything the Republicans say, they buy it. And you like, are you Republican? I don't understand this. Are you paying attention to what's happening or what's going on? And I've come to the conclusion we talked about before. A lot of a lot of my feelings about this is coming from a place of fear because I'm like, oh, you're just being obtuse and stupid on purpose. And my fear is you doing this will cause them to become more in power because all y'all together is a big number. Yeah. Um. I, I hear you. I think um, this is just them trying to get simple, get back, 
And this is the optics that Republicans are always chasing because they don't pass actual legislation. They don't mm-hmm. plan to govern. Um, they left all the things about governing on the table and they're planning, you know, they're going to adjourn till next year. Mm-hmm. Um, they don't even bring enough shit on the floor. Yeah, they're, they're not going to want to pass a budget next year. Nope. Um, and yet they will find the votes and the time to be like, let's look into this like goose chase because you're right. They're hoping that the optics are, will be simple enough that people go, you know, kind of like the uh, stimulus check. They're hoping that some people will be so dumb that the optics will be like, well, uh, Trump gave us a stimulus check. I don't know any details. I don't need to. I don't no matter what I'm being reminded of, period. Just that's it. Right. Um, and they're hoping that, well, Joe Biden also got impeached. So you say Trump was impeached, but Joe Biden was impeached. So what does it mean? It means nothing to be impeached, you know? And I think that's what they're really hoping for. And it's fucking sad that you're right, that it'll work on some people. Yeah. And the thing it is that, that they love low informed voters. And a lot of those people that say that they're very low informed, they're not informed at all. They're not looking, they don't want to be educated on it. And they just say shit. Because if you sit here and look me in my face and say, but the stimulus check, bitch, your tax money went to go. You were owed that money. That money was owed to you regardless of who the president was. You put in on it. They're giving it back to you. And the thing is, that is a drop in the bucket compared to the other fuck shit that you had to put up with to get that goddamn check. Yeah, and they're just, I mean, they're just hoping for something to try to get Joe Biden. This mm-hmm. Hunter Biden shit is just, it's I mean, it's so pop- political and targeted. It's everything they accuse Democrats of being, everything they accuse yes. Joe Biden of being, except, you know, when they get power, they really do these things. Mm-hmm. Um, Donald Trump is selling pieces of his suit worn to this Georgia booking. This motherfucker is like the Elvis commemorative plates of politics, like just like anything for a grift. And the sad part is some people are going to honestly give this man money. Yes. For this. Mm-hmm. Um, for four thousand six hundred and fifty three dollars, supporters get a small bit of fabric from the garments, along with forty seven NFT digital training cards. Uh, featuring. How do, you, how do you even know it's on the fucking garment itself? I, I right. wouldn't mm-hmm. I wouldn't put it past them to, to just be mm-hmm. just, like literally giving people any fucking suit, any piece of cloth. Yes, sir. You know, um, they also get 47 NFT digital training cards featuring the 77 year old politician, plus the opportunity to dine with him at Mar-a-Lago. According to Get Trump Cards promotional website, I feel like of all the things that are going to happen, you giving him money will happen. You getting something some fabric from some will happen the digital you'll get the nft cards that'll happen you might i feel like the dinner might not happen Mm -mm. oh they they probably claim they pick somebody don't pick nobody all right Mm -hmm. trump debuted his mugshot edition of the cards on tuesday they feature renderings of his the former president as a cyborg a cowboy and a superhero carrying swords and shields the cards sell for 99 dollars each they just being grifted. It's a shame. It's also like the rose-colored glasses of white supremacy are so interesting to me because they do not love Trump as he is. Mm-mm. They love Trump the idea, you know, yes. the idea of whiteness and white supremacy and and this dominance to yesteryear before before black people wanted things and before uh, women had the rights to choose and stuff like that. Like, that's how they treat it. And that's why you see, like, these Superman posters and fucking, like, shirtless, like, uh, uh, Photoshop pictures of him, his head on He-Man or something. And I'm like, that that's, we live in this country. Like, a certain amount of people in this country, quote unquote, believe in that. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, they really think that, that, like, they don't think that's weird at all. When I I voted for Obama, I think Obama's the best president of my lifetime, possibly best ever, right? Same. I ain't walking around with like his head superimposed on like uh you know a bodybuilder's body because mm-hmm. that's crazy. Right. And I don't and a lot of them worship him like a god. A lot of them Yeah, I don't him need like him to be like a king. Jesus. I know. I actually thought the memes and stuff of him looking like a rapper and stuff, a lot of those memes were racist and created by Republicans to be like, this was really in the White House. 
they they even their memes they had of like Michelle Obama and stuff and trying to make her ugly in the mm-hmm. eight. And you had these women that look like fucking Sasquatches in West Virginia talking about Michelle Obama being ugly. And you're like, what what is this that you're able to the delusion you see the world with? Right. It's so insane to me. We are not existing in the same reality. No, we're um, not. But people are going to buy this or, you know, and maybe this is a, a grift even on a, another level where there'll be like organizations buying this, pretending to be people, mm-hmm. whatever it is, to, to flood to, his coffers. Yep. And to help him pay all these uh, court bills, court cases. Right. He wore the blue suit while being booked on 13 felony charges. There's people that will buy the suit, but not, not believe in the 13 felony charges. Right. This is all fake except for this suit. Oh, man. But yeah, that's what Republicans are up to today. Um, Oprah. Mm-hmm. Um, she was at the color purple um screening, mm-hmm. I believe. And that purple dress. In a purple she dress. Great. She did. Um, she always looks great though. I mean, mm-hmm. honestly, she's yes. I mean I mean she Oprah. Yeah, she's Oprah. I've I I haven't seen a, a look from Oprah since like back when she first started TV and they used to not know how to do black women's makeup. That's the last time yeah, I seen yeah, Oprah but, looking, you but know. She like, got them together, go, no, y'all not gonna yeah. have me looking crazy on TV. So anyway, she's lost weight mm-hmm. and people have really been commenting on it, you know. And so she said, um, it was a public sport to make fun of me for 25 years. I've been blamed and shamed, and I blamed and shamed myself. Um, one particularly painful experience occurred early in her career when she found herself listed by the sharp tongue fashion critic, Mr. Blackwell. I was on the cover of some magazine that said dumpy, frumpy and downright lumpy. She recall, I didn't feel angry. I felt sad. I felt hurt. I swallowed that shame. I accepted that it was my fault. Winfrey says she has gained a more practical ga- grasp on maintaining a healthy weight in the long run is determined to eliminate any feelings of shame. Additionally, she's adopted. And that's something, honestly, I struggle with that too. And it's something that I think is interesting because I kind of came to this like epiphany very recently. It's kind of stupid. Most people probably already feel this way. But I was like, it's my body. And if I want to lose weight, that's on me too. Like it's mm-hmm. it's okay for, it's, it's your body's like a tool. It's like a thing you live in. It's like a ship. It's like a car. However you want to, if you, if you want, however you want your body to show up in the world, if that's what you want, that's what you want. Mm -hmm. Um, If it's not coming from a bad place, a negative place, uh, that self, that negative voice, then it's fine, you know? And just like your body works like an equation, right? Like a car needs oil and gas or do this, you know, depending on how many calories you consume, depending on how much you put out, depending on what kind of food you eat. That's up to you. And it's really not anybody's fucking business, you know? Mm-hmm. So um, as long as you're not saying or doing no hateful shit, you know, you should be allowed to, you know, feel how you feel and do what you want to do. And I think, you know, it's such a, like I said, most people probably already fucking know that, but, you know, uh, sometimes I'll be late to the party. You know, and I, I think, you know, for some people, they have been, and it's kind of a privilege, a privilege to go through their lives and not really have to worry about weight. And so for them... A lot of them, not all of them, a lot of them, it's hard to imagine. They don't understand. Yeah. They're very quick to judge. And they think it's something morally wrong with you if you are a certain size or a certain weight and all that shit. But, you know, when you've never had to struggle with your weight going up, with your weight going down, with you trying all types of diets and the exercises and the apps and the medicine yeah, and shit like that. Yeah, she's publicly talked about that and publicly taken like a hit for that. Mm-hmm. Um, so she, uh, basically said that she adopted a comprehensive approach that includes consistent exercise and other lifestyle adjustments, incorporating weight loss medication into her routine. After knee surgery, I started hiking and setting new distance goals each week. I could eventually hike three to five miles every day and 10 miles straight up hike on weekends. Uh, I felt stronger, more fit, more alive than I felt in years. I eat, I eat my last meal at four o'clock, drink a gallon of water a day. Use the Weight Watchers principles, accounting points. I had an awareness of weight loss medications, but felt I had to prove I had the willpower to do it. I now longer no longer feel that way. I realize I've been blaming myself all these years for being overweight, and I have a predisposition that no amount of willpower is going to control. Obesity is a disease. It's not about willpower. It's about the brain. 
Uh, nevertheless, she acknowledges the attention surrounding the rise of popularity of weight loss med medications like Wagovio, Zimpec, and Mojaro. It's always interesting that they call those weight loss medications because they actually are supposed to be like diabetes management medications. Yes. But people think, you know, it's a side effect, but it's really what is making these shit sell out. It's mm -hmm. what's making mm -hmm. insurance companies stop covering them and all that stuff. However, she emphasized these medications have not been a miraculous cure-all or the sole solution to her journey. I now use it as I feel I need it as a tool to manage not yo-yoing. The fact that there's a medically approved prescription for managing weight and staying healthier in my lifetime feels like relief, like redemption, like a gift, and not something to hide behind and once again be ridiculed for. I'm absolutely done with the shaming from other people and particularly myself. I think that's also interesting because this is probably the best ad for these medications. <laughs> they're ever going to get is Oprah coming out. So, you know, maybe, you know, the conspiracy is, you know, this is just an ad, but I, I mean, I also kind of do understand what she's saying in that there's been a lot of shaming about people as they're losing weight the last couple of years mm -hmm. with these medications out here in the mm -hmm. world. Cause people basically been like on some, you should, that doesn't count as real weight loss or, Oh, you just use that medicine. Or if someone just loses weight and we don't know how they go, it's cause they were on some of these medicines and, they just and there's a shame. Up, right? Yeah. And there's a shame that's attached to them. It's not like they're saying that in a good way. Mm -hmm. They're saying that like, you shouldn't have done it that way. You, you somehow fucked up. Um, which I think is <laughs> interesting. And it's, it's dope to see somebody like talk about that stuff out loud in public and you know, with it being Oprah, it's somebody you really, you know, people will come for her, but it's somebody that you know people hold in high esteem. Right. And it's also one of those things to where you have to be comfortable in your own skin. That's very and regardless of your weight and size, that's very hard for people to do. And you have to accept that people are gonna view you however they're going to view you, and there's nothing you can say and or do to change their minds because a lot of times, particularly when it comes to talking about heavier people. People are talking from a projection from within themselves. They have something going on, and in their mind, they go, I can never be fat. I can never be this. I can never be that. So, But they don't know how to channel that or how to address that, or they've never got to the root cause of the problem that makes them feel like that. So they consistently project that out to other people around them. Because as a child that was heavy as a child and like my weight yo-yo doll, I've been through that where you know you feel sad you feel depressed you lose the weight you gain the weight you lose the weight you gain the weight it's all over the place some people even get you know surgeries to you know reduce the size of their stomach and all that type of stuff and it's one of those things where if you choose to do that that's fine but some people do it because of the pressures of things around them versus it's something not trying to find that they truly want to do because it's something that will make them happy. Cause the, and there, there is a difference to me. Yeah. And I do. Yeah. Cause I think, I think most people engage with it from the pressure of people around them. I think that's how most people, if you, you know, if you listen to white people talk about weight, it's literally a lot of people's biggest fear to be seen and ostracized because we don't feel that way about many other things that mm -hmm. are, possibly even more debilitating and unhealthy, you know, uh, like smoking or something like that. Mm -hmm. People don't like, we don't come down on you the same way. Like people might say something like I wouldn't date a smoker, but like, there's not a physical, like, uh, a smokers in here. You know, there's no, yes. I had to sit next to a smoker on the plane, but if someone's fat, there's like jokes and all this shit. But yeah, it's, it's just interesting to hear like, someone like Oprah, who we know has dealt with a lot of shame about this yeah. and been shamed by a lot of people go, yeah, I'm not ashamed of this. Right. And and I'm glad because a lot of people, they never get that epiphany. They, they never get to that point in their lives where they're like, fuck it. And the thing is, the people that do say, fuck it, I'm happy at whatever size I am. They're called brave. And for a lot of them, they're like, I'm just living my life. Lizzo was a prime example for that. They're called brave. They're called bold. And, you know, for them, they're like, hey, doll, like, I understand, mm -hmm. you know, you, you quote unquote, heaping this upon me because of your personal insecurities. But I'm just trying to live my best life. And I just happen to be of a certain size. Right. But I'm getting praised says, for just doing normal shit. It says something that we know our society is a place where it, it requires bravery to be yourself and not fit into certain archetypes. And, I know what people are trying to say, and I know it comes from a good place, so I never really like push back too hard on it. But right. it, you know what they're really saying is, I'm in, I'm I'm agreeing with you that our society is fucked up. 
Yes. So you as a dark skinned black woman to be out here loving yourself and, you know, breaking all these like stereotypes people have for you. You're so brave. It's yeah, like, I, I don't know how to tell you this. I'm just existing in my skin. I didn't wake up and feel like I'm going to war this morning. But I but I hear what you're saying because you're acknowledging it's a war out here that I didn't volunteer to be in. So me just showing up being happy is 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 a fight that really I shouldn't have to take on. Agreed, agreed. And, you know, and it's also, you know, one of those things where for some people it comes from a place where I wish I could be as bold and as brave as you. So they're kind of rooting you on to kind of be their avatar, you know, instead of just embracing themselves and going, I can do it too if I choose to or opt to, but I'm, you know, opting not to, which is, you know, because it, you have to get over your own insecurities. It's also just a way to like keep shaming people because that's, yes. that's what all this Olympic hate is, is really be going, people going, you are fat, you should lose weight. Okay, well, I'm taking a drug. Not that way. <laughs> you know, like I want to see you sweat, bitch. Get out there and run. Like it's, you know, yeah. get show me some pictures of some salads, bitch. You like that's that's how people. Yeah, are and good. It, you know, somebody turns around and say, "Well, just kiss my ass." They act like that's something wrong with you for just telling them it don't matter. Stay out my business. In our ever uh, forward march backwards to the '90s crime bill, a new milestone has been reached today. America's Most Wanted is going to return. <gasps> It'll be hosted by. John Walsh and his son Callahan. Ain't that the original person? Yeah, John Walsh. What? That shit used to be every fucking where. Like before the internet, that's how everybody got their shit. Yeah. Um. Now, of course, he's you know why sway why? Of course. I mean, how? I'm sorry. I'm talking about why? How sway? Um. So of course, uh, John Walsh and America's Most Wanted in retrospect, it's kind of like cops, you know, cop again mm -hmm. and stuff. It creates this panic of someone's going to kidnap you. Someone's on the loose. You got to be scared of your neighbor. Panic, um, fear. And it was a major big TV back then. All those reenactments and stuff. I mean, it was up there with cops as far as mm -hmm. 1980s TV that I grew up with that made you feel like the whole world was scary and we needed to pass all the laws and lock everybody up. Right. Um, and I think that... Um, this returning or people feeling like it's time for it to return just goes back to what I was saying about like we're heading back towards an era of kind of, people are going to be begging for some type of crime bill stuff even though we do not have the evidence or the data to back it up if anything we have the evidence and the data to prove that it's we reversed. don't need to do it we, it yes. is lower than it was yes but it just it I don't think it really fucking matters to people yeah, because people get panic and they fear and all logic just kind of goes out the window. And I understand the panic and the fear and things like that. Because, you know, being black in America, odds of, for most of us, odds of us getting shot by the police is really, really, really low. Like, mm -hmm. odds of most of us. But because we've been traumatized so much and we've seen it so much, we've seen the death, we see the brutality, it puts a panic over you where you feel like any interaction that you have could just go awry and, you know, or, or, or either you could just, it just could just end in death. And there's nothing anybody can say to you to change your mind because this is something you believe because this is what the United States, the messages that you're receiving. I also wonder how much of this is like because the rise of like true crime and podcasting, mm -hmm. the rise of like social media is like no one's paying attention to this missing person and that missing person. And because that's really what this was before that, I wonder two things. One how much of this is them trying to meet the moment of like, oh, now it's time to strike while the iron's hot. Everybody's back to being paranoid about crime. And how much of this is going to be um, hard to pull off and it won't be the national sensation it used to be because we're already doing this everywhere. Yeah, and Like every, you know, like I said, podcast, every social media, every website, like we are constantly on the missing person alert you know what it what happened people have made so many true crime versions of tv shows like this at this point i do wonder if it'll catch and, on like it used to and i don't i think in the age of the internet it's gonna be very hard because then it was like one of the top rated shows because like you didn't have these other avenues of kind of your only source and also in my opinion they also are striking because of the fear of white people like white people have literally put this fear out there and they go well a we can capitalize on these white 
ring, right, right wing folks is in the panic. All the, you know, the Fox News and all those people, we can siphon off of some of them because this is the shit that they that they love. Panic, 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 panic. I also panic. feel like we're more aware of like propaganda and shit now. Mm-hmm. Than we used to be. Yes. Yeah. So I feel like we kind of know a little bit more. Maybe people won't watch it because of that, but we'll see. Because yeah, I heard those cop shows that were still like huge hits. Um you know, yes. not too long ago. Yes, they are. People still watch that shit. Yeah. Um, uh, Jodeci mm-hmm. is throwing the ultimate Vegas after party. They are um the four original members, KC, JoJo, Devontae Swing, and Mr. Dalvin, mm-hmm. all still alive, will be at the House of Blues in Las Vegas at Mandalay Bay Resort uh in 2024 through throughout March and July. Shout out to Usher. Mm-hmm. Cause Usher got all the R and B motherfuckers doing these re- Vegas residencies coming up next year. I've I've seen so many people. Bruno Mars is doing one. Like so many mm-hmm. people are doing them. I, now the thing is, it felt like before this, you just go there to see Usher. But I wonder what's gonna happen when it's like fucking eight groups. Are like it is is anyone gonna be able to corner the market if it's every R and B like motherfuckers just bringing back groups that ain't even like wasn't even popping like that. Not saying Jodeci wasn't, mm-hmm. but I'm saying it's gonna get down mm-hmm. to like uh, next is you know mm-hmm. they got start <laughs> combining them and like doing a tour Reddit Reddit yeah. Reddit, Reddit residency. Yes, res- tour residency. residency. Yes, is that a thing? I think I thought residency means you stay it's just in one, one place. Person. Yeah. Oh, oh, I see yeah. what you mean. It's because, gonna be multiple acts. Yeah, in one because place. you normally when you normally it's Usher. It's Madonna. Yeah, it's Beyonce, I know what you mean. But eventually, it's gonna have to be like, hey, all all eight of us can't yeah. put it off by ourselves. So let's do a residency with just right. with just all eight of us here. You do two nights. We do two nights. We rotate it around for a month. And you know, if it pops, we'll you know we can extend it. Well, it'll be interesting to see what happens with them because you know that's a name. That's a group I didn't know would get together. Also, like uh, the last few times we've seen. Like KC, it's been like real touch and go. Yeah, yeah. you know, yeah, it's kind of like what you're gonna get. But I guess new addition to it with Bobby Brown, and it was similar. Like when we saw Bobby Brown um before that, we were like, is he gonna make it through a tour? So he did though. Speaking of R and B, John B, the R and B artist. Don't listen to mm-hmm. what people say. Yes, he is trying to get an invite to the cookout. I think. Okay. Oh, he didn't he know he already invited? Okay, Karen said he already was invited to the cookout. Yeah, somebody gonna invite him because the song I mm-hmm. just sung, somebody auntie is swaying right now to that. Okay, so according to Karen, he's already uh on his way to the cookout. Uh because he auntie's, gonna at least be playing in the background. Uh, aunties love love him. Um, well, let's make this a segment then. Oh, hey, segment welcome to the cookout where we reward white people for doing the least yep. by giving them the most hugging our arms around them as black people and saying come on in mm-hmm. you want us now have a plate have a plate we're starting today's welcome to the cookout segment with john b mm-hmm. john b reveals he has never received any royalties from his music wow i did not know that can't think of anything blacker than that. Ain't that the truth? I mean, damn. Put him up there with the likes of Grandmaster and <laughs> mm-hmm, them old school <laughs> rappers, right? <laughs> Put him up there with the he got his five. The deal for real. Put him up there. <laughs> <laughs> damn. Never. And this motherfucking song was his songs was everywhere for a minute. Everywhere. Are you still down, baby? Are you still yes! down? Yes! Apparently, he's still down in his bank account because they are not giving him money. Okay. As many times I played that shit, girl, it's all right, right. baby. 
uh, yes, he was on Joe Budden's podcast and said that he hadn't been paid for his records. Um, so yeah, he said he hadn't been paid for any of his records. Ooh, what kind of deals did he sign? Uh, he, yeah, he admitted that he was signed to a bad record deal when he signed with Babyface's personal admins record group, but the producer immediately rejected the claim, saying, I find it really saddening that John would let someone run with this false narrative. Just going to say that John was never signed to me personally or my label. All I did was write songs to try to help. Elsewhere in the interview, the singer said he wrote 100% of his records, and while he gets some kind of publishing profits, it's not what it needs to be. John went on to say it was a fine print of his deal that caused the mess, uh, but now he's hopeful that everything will come full circle. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. He just wants somebody to love. you know. Mm -hmm. back. That's all. Um... But yeah, welcome to the cookout. Uh, you know, getting done wrong. Of course, you gonna in be a in shady in a shady business deal. That's that's one way to mm -hmm. to to definitely find an invite. Child, yeah, he gonna be on somebody's slow jam at the cookout. Mm hmm. <laughs> All right, let's get to the next person that's coming to the cookout. Ryan Reynolds. Okay, how he go? How he, Ryan Reynolds says he and Blake Lively will always be unreservedly sorry for their plantation wedding. And what can I say? I had the plantation pineapple yesterday. Oh, this shit was so I guess we got to let it go. That shit was so good. What we saw at the time was a wedding venue on Pinterest. What we saw after was a place built on devastating tragedy. Okay, someone's done the reading. Mm -hmm. Somebody educated him. Okay. Um, yeah, he trying to sell you mint mobile. So, child, he's like, mm -mm. uh, he said, it's something we'll always be deeply and unreservedly sorry for. It's impossible to reconcile. What we saw at the time was a wedding venue on Pinterest. What we saw after was a place built upon devastating tragedy. Years ago, we got married again at home, but shame works in weird ways. A giant fucking mistake like that can either cause you to shut down or can reframe things and make you move, move you into action. It doesn't mean you won't fuck up again, but repatterning and challenging lifelong social conditioning is a job that doesn't end. Come on through. Um, I like that. Yeah. Uh, last week, we contributed $200,000 to the NAACP Legal Defense Fund. We stand in awe of this organization and its leader, Sherilyn Eiffel, and this is just the start. We also pledge to stay educated and vote in every local election. We want to know the positions of the board, school board nominees, sheriffs, mayors, council persons. We want to know their positions on justice, but mainly we want our, to use our privilege and platform to be an ally and to play a part in easing the pain for so many who feel as though this grand experiment is failing them. Uh, link in the bio to the NAACP Legal Defense Fund. There are petitions to sign, representatives to call, money to be donated, calls to action, or simply information to better understand issues and how each and every one of us can help. Come on through. Everybody going to get a mint mobile phone mm. at the cookout. Well, there you go. Uh, Deadpool coming to the to the cookout, Yes, he is. We're going to be wait. playing his movie in the background. I want to see who, who, who all the other X-Men is going to cameo in it. Come on. Welcome to the cookout. Welcome to the cookout. I hope they bring Darwin back. Okay. He got done wrong. <laughs> uh, speaking of Black X-Men. Um, Angelina Jolie's daughter, Zahara, is heading to C HBCU Spelman College in the fall. And she is at Spelman. Mm -hmm. I, seen, I seen Angelina uh, at one of the events. And she like she was crying. Like she had been crying. Yeah. And it's also uh, when they first did it. And what I love about Black people, she would go and... We were really excited to see her. We talked to her and everything. She just walked around campus and, and you know, niggas just walk up to her. Hey, how you doing? I love your movies. Blah, 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 blah. Like, it, it was it was a very um, enjoy. It was very joy joyful to, to, to just see her getting embraced and her love of her baby. Yeah, I'm happy for her, you know. Um, and then also, like, uh, she been through some stuff with Brad Pitt, who mm -hmm. somehow continues to kind of skate. Uh, on the allegations that he's uh, abusive and stuff, but I think people just don't seem to care in that way. Um, but uh, yeah, shout out to her and her um and her baby. You know, we love seeing it. Okay, uh, bring bring Zahara to the cookout, and you know, I know they got catfish plates at the HBCU homecoming. We hope to see you there, Angelina. Oh, no, 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 no. 
Put some mustard on that fish sandwich. All right, that's enough. Welcome into the cookout. Um, uh, oh shit, I forgot to cover this in the first segment, but more Jonathan Major stuff. Obviously, this is the uh, the trial that is ongoing today was the last day that the defense went and they rested, and tomorrow will be closing arguments. But TMZ dropped some video because, of course, TMZ always has the fucking video. They are everywhere. Oh, like, my God. I don't know how they be getting this footage, but they will get the fucking footage. Like, we got the audio, too, of um him uh saying he's a great man. And he needs her to be like Coretta. And, and like, nothing new was unveiled in there. But... Um, it was definitely like, you know, uh, I, I, it's like salacious, even though you knew it was happening. Mm -hmm. Like people knew like, oh yeah, yeah, this video exists, but it was something about the fact that, that it was him and we're hearing it that made people start sharing it again to be like, this motherfucker's crazy or whatever. Um, and it's weird cause they're saying like, it's TMZ, so I'm I'm guessing it wasn't like played in a courtroom again. I'm guessing right. that like, why would the defense do that? Um, but at any rate, so they had that that audio is like two minutes long. Um, and the audio is kind of kind of low, but I'll try to play it for y'all. Let me pull it up on Twitter. And it's also long, so I won't play all of it. It's like two minutes, but uh I don't even know how good the audio sound is. Period. This is accurate. Period. Do you understand that? Yeah. Do you really know this? Do you really? Yes. Then how dare you come home drunk and disturb the peace of our house when we have a plan? I'm I would so like sorry. To get to, I would like to get to the point where your friends know what job I'm on and go, I think Grace is going to be out of commission. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I won't. I, like, I'm, I, no, no. Do you understand that? Because cause that team, that unit, right? Grace has to be in a certain mindset to support Coretta Scott King. Do you know who that is? That's Martin Luther King's wife. Okay, number one, I feel like the you know what that is is funny. You know who that is? It's because if it was a black woman, I feel like zero people would ask, do you know who that is? That's true. But since he's dating like a white woman, sniffling and crying. He's mad, but he also has to be, yeah, because it's not like he's been yelling at her, because mm -hmm. remember, it was like she had someone over to the house, but he's wow. trying to focus on some role that he has, and it, you know, he feels like she should be in the house at a certain time, and, and everything, you know, because he's, this is so important. But that, you know who that is, is hilarious to me, because like, who the fuck don't know Coretta Scott King is? And I'm like, oh, Maybe him and his white lady have never really had talks about this or really that's true too. Maybe you know, maybe some people don't. They yeah. just they just be dating people, don't be having these conversations that need to be had, certain, if y'all not the same race. Yeah, certain cultural touchstones kind of matter. I, I I find it hard to believe anyone wouldn't know that, but what do I know? To support Coretta Scott King. Do you know who that is? That's Martin Luther King's wife. Michelle Obama. Barack Obama's wife. I know I'm not. I I I shouldn't have gone out. I'm no, no, sorry. Let me, just, let me just lay it out for you, right? If I am, I'm just gonna say this. My temper, my shit, my trauma, blah, blah, all that, all that said, right? And I'm gonna say I'm a great man, a great man. I am doing great things, not just for me, but for my for my culture, and for the world. That is actually the position I'm in. That's real. I'm not going to think about it. I didn't ask for it. I've worked. That's that's wild. So the stuff that was real, yeah, because his voice, the adding mm. the voice to it just makes it sound completely different. Yeah, well, it sounded really like this in my head the whole time, but mm. yeah, it's just, I mean, that's already kind of a ridiculous thing to say mm -hmm. anyway, but then this happened. Um, uh, the video of, of the altercation that the um, 
at the in the car came out there's surveillance video from many different angles from street surveillance this is in new, new york right yeah it's oh in yeah new york. they got cameras everywhere so cctv essentially now what i think was weird is that the person who shared it said jonathan major was running like primary sanders and then i saw a bunch of people that seem to otherwise try to take stuff like this seriously and they had a lot of jokes and the, the, i didn't even talk about it on twitter because i said twitter is not a good place mm -hmm. to talk about this because this is a place where it's jokes and shade and everything's funny um and i think on a couple of levels it's interesting because one it's video is basically him running from this woman for three minutes um mm -hmm. There is an initial altercation where he tries to, she is grabbing onto him. And you see him like push her into the car. But at least from my point of view, it seems that he's pushing her in the car to say, get off of me and try to run away. Um, and then there's allegations that she, uh, like the the bruises on her hand and uh, and uh, it, he's there. He's saying it came from her hitting him, not him doing anything to her. Uh, but I'll play the video because it's honestly not graphic or violent in that way. Okay. It's mostly him running. But what, what the second part I was going to point out, it then becomes jokes about look at this big man running from this woman because all of a sudden, if the abuse is going the other way, it's ha, 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 you're a man running from a woman. Mm -hmm. And and I'm like, no one's treating it seriously. No. You know? And, and I think there's a lot of people that think like, well, this exonerates him and he'll he'll be fine now. And I don't know that that's going to happen. As I said earlier, um, the text messages that confirm the stuff he did the, the year before this in September, 2022, those are pretty damning without this, that this night of in March could completely be her lying. And it still would be damning that he has text messages being like, don't go to the hospital for that head injury that I'm responsible for because people are going to like talk and I'm going to get in trouble and I don't think you'll lie to the people so that I'll be protected. You won't protect us. That doesn't look good. Even if this is, is better for him, you know, uh, there's no sound here. So you have to almost be watching live with us, but, uh, yeah, that's the, I think the, the van or the, the car they were in. Um, and there starts to be like an altercation or whatever, um, which you can't see yet. That's him getting out. That's him lifting her up and putting her back into the uh, car. But in what seems to be like him trying to like make her stay in the car while he runs away. Um, you never see him swing on her or anything like that. He gets out the car. She still follows him. Uh, she's grabbing him. He literally tries to yank himself away and run away. Uh pushes her off a little bit of him, still it tries to tries to get get away. Like it does seem like this whole thing was him trying to get away. Like and it goes further. Like you'll see him literally like there's so many angles. He's running down the street, you know, yards ahead of her. Like it's she is pursuing him at this point. So oh he's been running for a hot minute. Yeah. And so you know it's Twitter so it's, it's like a lot of jokes. You look like Barry Sanders and you know, that boy was running. What, 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 you know? Um, like I said, long enough, I probably could be like, I know what that's at. And like I said, I saw people kind of like, they can't, we can't help it. People just want to make jokes about it, even though, you know, up until this point, they have been very, very fucking serious about this whole thing. So maybe it's the idea. Well, they got cameras there. We're passing all the city bikes. Yeah. Like <laughs> maybe it's the I, the I, who cares doing it? So maybe it's the idea of like, well, it's a woman pursuing a man, so he's not in danger in that way for real. So it's just funny, as opposed to it being like, damn, this is like a serious thing. Oh, oh yeah, it is a serious thing. No, but... it's too late. You did your thing. Don't don't oh, worry. I was Everyone about did it. The city bikes. I know. <laughs> Everyone got jokes. I'm, it's the tone of the coverage. Is jokes. I'm not. I'm not mad. It's just what it is. I'm. I'm saying it as facts. People, for the most part. Anytime a man is a victim of something, it's more like a ha ha because we don't consider them to truly be in danger. Uh, he comes back up the block. She's talking to some people. He doesn't seem like he's trying to engage her. And then she is, you know, almost seems like she's the one who's embarrassed uh, or like, I can't believe you're being ridiculous and not wanting to talk to me, you know? Um, now, as a person that's watched a lot of Cheaters, the TV show, this does it kind of looks like 
the reaction that a lot of people have on cheaters when they get busted cheating, yeah, where they become like, I'm so offended that you busted me cheating, I'm running away and I'm I'm I can't believe you. And you know, the the thing is supposedly she saw text messages on his phone from another woman that you know alludes to him uh you know possibly cheating on her and and this was the out fallout from that so i could see that but obviously i'm speculating no one's ever going to know what truly happened Mm-mm. but i guess you know between the driver saying i never saw any like him hitting her between this video evidence of him literally running away from her not hitting her i now see why he thought i'll go to trial over this cuz this is enough evidence that at least makes it not cut and dry to where it's like oh he beat her and he got to go to jail like even with those text messages and stuff uh, like you said if the if his lawyers were able to somehow get those text messages to not be allowed in court and then all we had was this footage from that night okay. he he would be working at marvel right now yes that's why they fought to finale it was like no that's irrelevant yeah um but yeah with the text messages the the voice recording and all that stuff, I think he's still going to end up taking a hit for this. And I don't know what it'll mean for his career. I don't know that he'll actually be found guilty of anything in this. Because like I said, looking at it, what happened that night doesn't really seem to be this open and shut case. The other thing that I find interesting, remember when Rolling Stone was looking into this and all the speculation before the trial, there was this period of time where they were like, Oh, all these other women are going to come forward and talk about him. Well, they're wrapping up arguments tomorrow. Those there was never any other like women witnesses, whether it was ex-girlfriends, people that worked with him on the set of something. It's interesting because like they that was definitely put in the media as like a this man has a pattern and this is all going to be exposed and mm-hmm. it doesn't seem that it was. At least not so far now. Yeah, well, I mean, tomorrow's closing arguments. I don't, how the fuck is it going to happen then? You know, because this was the time to go on the record in the courtroom and be like, hey. Oh, yes, if you want to yeah, go Yeah, it never yes. happened. Yes. So I think that's interesting. Um, But yeah, that's that's where we are with the Jonathan Majors trial. People were hitting me up to see if I, you know, like, hey, did you hear about it? Yes, we heard about it, guys. Of course we heard about it. <laughs> um, All right, let's go to a different segment. Um. We haven't done this in a while. I keep forgetting. We're going to war. Gender war. There's a war going on outside. Gender war. There's a war going on outside. Gender war. Gender wars, guys. It's been a minute. You know, I didn't forget about y'all. Um, but uh, I've been collecting them. I just hadn't felt mm-hmm. like, you know, we just haven't had time to talk about them all. Um, here's one. And remember, we're not getting caught up in couldn't be me. We're not getting caught up in who won, who's right, women or men. We're just judging the content from, I believe it was zero to 10. Yes. On I what, on how 10. good the gender war content is. Yeah. In this case, we're supposed to believe a dude woke up from anesthesia and started revealing his deepest, darkest secrets to his wife. She just happened to be recording on her phone, potted, posted to social media for us all to fight about. Co- total coincidence. You know how y'all be doing that sometimes? Your loved one is in a deep fucking coma. They start coming to, and the first thing you do, pull out your phone and record it and hope they say some deep, dark secrets. Let's see. I had a threesome. A couple of days ago. And- I had a threesome a couple of days ago. Now, here's my question, Karen. Mm-hmm. Already, oh, I got a question. Is this man really in the hospital for something for real? Or have they set up like the set of something to look like a hospital? It looks Do they work at a hospital and now when they break, they film skits? Like, how did this happen? Because I do see the IV drip. They have the TV mounted on the wall. It kind of looks like a hospital building ceiling. Uh, but kind of, but kind of not. And, there's a lot of stuff blank on the walls too. That's kind of missing. I don't know. Yeah, and, and as somebody who has been in uh, hospitals before and has been patients in the hospital, odds of the TV being up and to the right are low. A lot of times the TV is like at the foot of the bed. Like I'm not trying to be funny, 
for the you, patient no, to no, see. No, you're doing the work. You're doing the work. For right the now. patient to see, they're at the foot of the bed because, you know, you have patients, they might not be able to look up into the left or look up into the right, you know, to see the TV. And, 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 and the TVs ain't there for us. The TV is there mm-hmm. for them. You know what I mean? For the person that's going to be there the longest. Yeah. It just, <clears throat> it's interesting that you pointed that out. Yeah. I'm sorry, what were you going to say? I said, said, that's just something, you know, that I'm just kind of, you know, observing and and looking at this IV thing. Mm -hmm. Where's the box? It's normally like a little box on that pole. Right, yeah. Not trying to be funded in monitors. There's nothing like, beep, beep. Nothing like that. Yes, like, it's normally, I don't know where it is, but that's too much of a pole for you not. So maybe that'll be exposed later in the video, but five seconds in, we don't see that. No, y'all know what I'm talking about, the box that monitors everything and tells them what's happening. We know. I have three, so a couple of days ago and it was great what the fuck are you talking about you heard me i'm not even sure that that's a hospital bed she look at the sheet on it it's like a regular no, comforter that's not a hospital bed because that's hmm. not how those are not hospital sheets and why he looked like he got a baklava on one of them things. It's like Balaclava? He, yes. It's like he mm-hmm. pulled it and it just covered his whole face up. I think that medicine got you hallucinating or talking out your mind or something. Cause... I know what I'm talking about. You just stupid. That's why I love you because you, you stupid. You believe anything I say. I don't cheat. Did they give him truth serum? How has this never been documented in medical history before where somebody goes under as, as, anesthesia and they just start just saying it. i feel like that would be a well-known side effect like hey hey don't go on this anesthesia you got a side check you know i done cheated on you so many times mm. so many times huh so let me ask you this what? last night when you said you was going to work where was you at uh i was at my baby mama house I got a- how is he so responsive to, like they're really basically having a conversation. His eyes are just closed, right? And he's just talking really slow. And you know something else I realized? Like I said, I've been to enough yeah. hospitals. Where is the IV bag itself? Like not trying yeah, to funny. Yeah. I, I, I see like the cords. Yeah, I wonder. It I might be up here. I'm circling this. This might be it, and the angle might be from the side. But yeah, I don't. I can't Normally tell. For it's sure. like a bag that you know yeah. whatever they. Yeah, and on top of that, I've been in enough hospitals. They normally only use white sheets. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I noticed that with the comforter. Maybe they brought one from home to make them more comfortable. Oh, I, I I'm trying know. to help them. I didn't know you could bring shit from home. I didn't know either, but maybe that's what they did. Maybe he's been in there so long. Okay. The baby on the way. I don't have no... I'm not pregnant. Anybody talking about you, stupid? I got my side piece pregnant. I'm going to be a daddy. Don't worry. We'll be back. I'm finna whoop his ass. They do have him in like a wheelchair. They're pushing him out. There's like a... So I do think they went to a hospital. I, I Like I said, I wonder if they worked there. Someone Like if it's a skit they did in a hospital? Because, I mean, unless they just have these things sitting around. Maybe it could be like a nursing home. And they just worked there and they did the sketch there. Yeah, because- yeah, like I said, I've been to the phosphorus. Where's the board, the big white board that they have with it, with a where each nurse has to write their name on it and show you their schedule? My name is Mary. I'll be here from, from 12 p.m. to 12 a.m. Maybe he's not in ICU. He's in like uh, ah, in okay. and out. I don't know. Oh, I'm stupid. I'm stupid. What? Oh, I can't wait to go home and whoop your fucking ass. You're going to be right back up here at this ER. What? You're going to be right back up here. What? You got a baby on the way having threesomes and shit. How? Oh. How? You? So I guess the, the gag is he didn't know that she heard it all and saw it all because he was, uh, he was, you know, whatever. They did tag this tweet with follow at Street Media TV for more crazy viral videos on your timeline. Uh, the comments, that's why I go to the doctors myself. Someone replied, nah, this, I mean, that. that's why I go to doctors by myself. And they replied, nah, this is facts right here. Uh, if this nigga wearing, is this nigga wearing a shiesty in the hospital? My brother wear his in the shower. Street media, So street media has responded to like a lot of the tweets from it, which makes me feel like they were trying to keep it, make it go viral. Also, follow us for more of these videos feels like 
a sketch company, not a like how can you know more stuff like this is going to happen? Um, so yeah, I I what would you rate this zero to ten though? Because I, I feel it's, like it's fake. I, I don't yeah, think it, yeah, it's I, real. I don't think it's real. And my score for this is probably about a one or a two. And the mm. biggest reason why is because if you're gonna do something like this, her tone should have been hyper. Mm -hmm. You know, just hearing that her response, she'd be like, What? What you talking about? Blah, 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 blah. And she was too not trying to find it like yeah. like it was so and he's driving himself home. As in, in I've been <laughs> on them drugs, y'all. You can't do shit in them drugs. Yeah, them I most drugs. I mostly feel like the sketch wasn't thought out. Mm -mm. If anything, she should have been the one driving. Yeah, I it's, I feel like it wasn't so, thought out and then the other thing too is this and this is a thing that happens a lot on my facebook reels because I, I watch a lot of facebook reels especially if i'm on them edibles i watch a lot of facebook reels and there's a lot of people trying to make these gender wars and sketches and mm -hmm. comedy they're not good at and it. the vast majority and then and like i said this probably is because we're the weirdos but there's so much like allusions to abuse and beating each other yes. and cheating on each other and stuff and people just think those things are funny mm -hmm. you know and and i think it's like the lowest bar of funny yeah, like a lot of it's very hack yeah like i saw one where like like they have these ones now where women are doing the ceiling challenge and then a man comes up and like rip phone out there like what you doing or looks at them and they are supposed to be like oh no i'm not gonna shake my ass it's like well you're an instagram model that shakes their ass i don't this like the the, the joke is he's gonna hurt you or do something to you mm -hmm. for doing this uh i saw another one like women were dancing in front of on the street in the club obviously fake video but then like a, it's like when your man when you told your man you were coming home or something, and then a, a dude literally comes and grabs this woman by the head and and picks her up and walks off, and yeah. and it's but it's played like isn't this cute and funny? You know how men are, you know how we as women are, and all this stuff. And, and so like, no. the part at the end where she's like, "I'm gonna beat your ass and shit," I'm like, "Yeah, that 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 is on par with the kind of comedy that this is, but also like it's not very funny. Mm -mm. Um, like it's not. I'm gonna break up with you." Uh, you on your own now. How you you know take care of yourself at the hospital? It's I'm gonna beat you up when we get home. And the acting was not great. Like, yeah, like, terrible. Like, acting. like if you're gonna do some, if you're gonna do gender wars, commit to the part, people. Come also, it. I feel like if someone was talking in their sleep, they'd be more mumbly. Yeah, it wouldn't be so perfectly clear. Like you would be I hear you, like you I'm drunk. responding to you, I'm calling you stupid multiple times. So yeah, yes. I, I give yes. it. I give it honestly a zero out of ten. Yeah, like, uh, yeah, yeah. I don't want to fight it all. I don't think anyone really bought this. And you know, what? I'm gonna give it a zero too, just mm. for the simple fact that it didn't trend. Like, yeah. like, like this. This right here was not something that everybody was talking about or something like that. This was something that they just kind of threw. Out, almost like you throwing shit at a wall to see what's gonna stick. Yeah, if you look at the quote tweets, you can see there's like obviously an effort to try to pretend that this is real. Like. Mm -hmm. There's, you know, blue checks, which literally is the worst. It means it means what people said it used to mean now that people can pay for them. Baby, if any guy I will pull this shit on God, Joe, I'm straight up West Side Chicago, blah, blah, blah. Like that blue check person. Woo, that's trifling. You know, is yeah, it? another blue check person. Diary right. of a Mad Black Woman 2 coming out, y'all. Way not to go in 2024. Anesthesia, aka True Serum. Like they, like people want it. People want to believe these things. This is what I always say on here. They it goes viral and people fight about it. They want it to be true, but it's so obviously un like fake. Mm -hmm. Um. So then I guess people just you know, and I don't even see people like going back and forth arguing with these folks. Mm -mm. Um. That's, that's, most of these don't even have a retweet or a like. It's just yep. That's why I said they get a zero. And a lot of these are probably accounts that whoever the street media. Like people bots are, or something. Yep. They mm. bought these accounts and like check marks and. You know, they feel like if enough blue quote unquote, quote unquote check marks pump it out, people will start. I wonder responding. if like younger people are liking and sharing this stuff, but not because they believe it, but because like it's nothing's real on the internet. It's all bullshit. Yeah. We're just having fun with it. And I'm even looking at the impression <laughs> 78, 125, yeah. 71. Yeah, nobody's it, even yeah, looking at these. Correct. Yeah. So all right. Well, 
we we both get a zero out of ten. That mm-hmm. was terrible. That was not good. bad job, everybody. You should all be ashamed of yourselves. Yes, um, if we try to strike up a gender war, this is not yeah. a, this this is not a way to do it. I don't feel like fighting anybody based off of this. I, I me mean, either. This feels pretty uh pretty terrible. Um, let's see, what should we do? Um, uh, you know what? Let's get ready to wrap it up. I like doing these shorter shows. We got a late start tonight. Um and my car almost overheated and all that stuff but we're live and uh i say we move out of here with some sore ratchetness Cocaine fueled samurai sword assault. He thought he saw the devil. Woo! Cocaine is a hell of a drug. A man accused of nearly killing his friend with a samurai sword during a six day cocaine bender had told police he thought his friend was the devil. Yeah, let's uh, let's open up an impeachment into his day. Woo! You was truly as high as the kite. Uh, the case against Joseph Gretch, thirty three, uh, from Borma, Bormla. Uh, continued on Tuesday in front of Magistrate Gabriella Vela. Gretch is being charged with grievously injuring his friend Marco Rapinette on Saturday, uh, November 11th. He is also being charged with attacking and threatening the, the man and also with recidivism. According to Inspector Paul Camerleri, Rapinette's arm was covered in blood when he went to the Bormla police station asking for help. He told police that he was assaulted by Gretch with his this admission captured on police body cam. Rappinette later fell unconscious and taken to the hospital for treatment. It was at least days later that gave police more details about the incidents. According to Camilleri, Camilleri, the victim said he had been taking cocaine with the accused, who at one point became paranoid and attacked him with the sword. Eventually, the police officers went to arrest Gretch and found him sitting on the doorstep of his house. Gretch told police he had mistaken his friend for the devil. Thought him the devil, thought him the devil, he repeated. Gretch was also taken to the hospital with police suspected intoxication. He was released it, released later for questioning. He chose not to answer. Intoxication and high? Like, you... Intoxication and high. Intoxication is being high. Uh, oh, yeah, does, okay. Intoxication is just drunk. Okay, okay. Intoxication is almost when they say under the influence? Yes. Okay, I'm with you now. Uh, okay. When he was released for questioning, he chose not to answer any questions. So then put him back in. What the fuck? Uh, he told the court six days that's a hell of a when they said a binger a bender he went on a bender uh he told uh police he had been taking cocaine with the accused uh for a week before the incident at rapinette um the two had known each other since birth that's what cocaine and swords do they'll come between even Ooh, the best of friends apparently so with rapinette assuming that gretch did not realize what he was doing at the time of the incident he absolutely 100 did not know what he was doing or that he hit me with the sword Oh, man. What was in that cocaine? What was in the cocaine? At the end of the hearing, the accused was granted bail against a deposit of 1,000 pounds and personally guarantee of 7,000 pounds. Inspector Paul Kimileri was assisted, assisted by Prosecutor Cynthia Tomasulo from the Attorney General's office. Oh, well, we don't care about that part. Anyway, so it's come between friends. Y'all got to be careful out here, okay? Watch yeah. who you're doing cocaine with. And and don't be doing those six-day benders. Yeah, six days of coke. <laughs> All right, y'all. We'll talk to y'all uh, Saturday for the feedback show. Yes. If you're a premium, uh, Balls Deep uh, is tomorrow night. Um, and, yeah, until then, I love you. I love you, too. Mwah. Bye, everybody. Have a good rest of your night.